Hello there, welcome back to my channel. We're getting ready together today because I have several things going on and I need to get some makeup on my face. So I'm filming a hair tutorial. So my hair is wet right now and I need some makeup for that. I have some pictures being taken this afternoon, choir rehearsal tonight. So I just thought it would be fun to bring you along. I'm using several new products and some old favorites. So let's just get going. I'm starting off with a new eyeshadow primer I've been testing out. It's by Luna and Aster and it's called The Real Glow eyelid primer. I uh, have some thoughts on this. I do love how concealing this product is, but it's a very unique kind of drier formula. So still trying to test out the longevity of it, but I do love the amount of coverage that you get and that it's pretty much instantly dry. Since I'll be filming today and having pictures taken, I like to go for a fuller coverage, more matte finish. And so the foundation I chose today, I'm going back to the Bare Minerals Bare Pro Liquid Foundation. I like to use that or my Dior Forever Matte. I've been using the Dior one a lot lately, so I thought I would use this. This is the shade Sandstone 16, and I'm gonna use, this is a uh, beauty sponge. I know this brand, I'll put it across the screen. I'm blanking on it at the moment, but I know it's hard to get here in the US, but if you're in Europe, apparently this is a more easily accessible brand, but it is a fabulous beauty sponge. So I want good coverage, but I want it to look like skin in real life. So I have real life and film to put makeup on for. So that's my goal for today. So I love to use a beauty sponge with this foundation. And you may notice that my, my face looks a little more tan up here. Hang with me. I know I've been teasing you about trying a bunch of new sunless tanning products and I have finally reached the end of my testing. So the video will be coming up in the next week or two. So stay tuned. I do have some new fabulous ones to share with you, including this face sunless tanner, which has become a favorite. And then just to make sure everything is seamless, I mean, this is a pretty good color match for me, but again, because I'm filming, I'm gonna bring a little bit of what's left of that foundation just down my neck so that there is no strange stopping point or anything weird that shows up on camera. And I'll just lightly go over my ears with what's left. Okay, while that sets, I'm gonna go in for, with eyeshadow. Now the palette I chose is one I've had requests for a tutorial on, and it's this new one from Huda Beauty. This is the Cool Matte Obsessions palette. I love this. I hate saying I'm obsessed with makeup, but I have really been enjoying this. Now to start off with, because this doesn't have a good cream highlight shade, I'm gonna dip into my Doll Tin palette. I've talked a lot about this. It's hard for me to put it down. I'm gonna go into this shade right here, and I'm gonna do this just right under the brow. I don't wanna go in, I don't wanna go too far down with this shade, but I wanna use this under the brow and then I'm actually going to use this on my lid. We're gonna do an all matte look today. And I just like to start off with some brightness here and then we'll go into our palette. If you have more pink tones in your skin, you could use the light pink from that Cool Mattes palette and that would probably work well for you in both of those scenarios. Okay, now let's go to our palette and I've heard some people really diss on this. They really don't like it. I love this palette. You have to like pink and purpley tones. I mean, you know, but I do and so I love it. All right, I'm going to go in first with this shade right here. This is the Morphe M504 and this shade does still have a hint of rosiness but it's a cooler, it has some brown tones in it, at least on my skin, but do you see how much color you get off of that? I love it. I'm just gonna put this all through the crease and I'm going to kind of go for a lifted eye look today. Nothing too dark and dramatic, but something that is kind of going to help disguise my hooded eyes. 
And then I'll take a little bit of that here on the outer corner. And I do get pretty messy with my eyeshadow. That's why I don't use concealer until after I've done eyeshadow and cleaned up. So I just think this is faster for me. <laughs> can be messy and then clean up the outer corner. And I'll share that little tip with you today. I know some people have requested that I keep that clip in. So I'm going to do that. In the outer corner, I'm going to take this rougher number 15 brush. And I like to do a combination of this kind of reddish brown and this muted purple shade. So I just tap in the purple, tap in there, tap off. These are really soft shadows, but they're very pigmented. So they blend easily, but you do want to tap off the excess so you don't get any fallout. Do you see how, I mean, it just, I love how all of these colors work so well together. And I feel like you can get a lot of different looks with this palette. So I'm just build up a little more of that in the outer corner. And I'm taking, of course, going up above the crease. So then I'll just kind of look right straight ahead and see if I need to bring that color up a little higher, my hooded eyes, and then with what's left to kind of bring it through the crease there. For the outer corner, I'm gonna start off with the BK Beauty 204 brush. I'm gonna go into this dark plum shade. This is more of like a cream to powder formula. I still, out of habit, tap off my brush, but I really don't need to. So I'm gonna use this first softly to deepen this outer corner. And then we're gonna use this as our liner. I have been really loving this method and I feel like this actually stays all throughout the day as my liner or used like this as a shadow just to kind of deepen the outer corner. It's a really, really great formulation. And then I'm gonna take just a little bit of that along the lower lash line here just in the outer corner and then connect it up to the outer, the upper part here. And then go back with my rubber number 15. Just kind of blend all that together. And then I will go in with the Morphe M432 brush and more of that plum shade. And now I'm going to use this as my liner. I'm just gonna stamp this right into my lashes. Do you see how much great color you get? And again, it's because it's kind of more of that cream formulation, it stays put all day. So I really, and I love kind of the softer, it's a softer tone than if I did dark brown or even black. So, and then the added bonus, if you have blue or green eyes, it helps bring out the color of your eyes as well. I'm just going to finish lining here and I am going to bring that line up a little bit as I go out but because we already added that kind of soft blend of that color do you see how it just kind of fades really nicely now I'll just go back in with that cream shade and just touch up that lid a little bit and then I'll go back with the rougher 15 brush, wipe it off real well. And I'm just gonna go in with a touch of that first shade we used in the crease and use this just to help that brighter lid shade kind of blend seamlessly into what we've got going on in the outer corner. All right, final blend here. Okay, on the lower lash line, I am going to wipe off that Morphe M432 and just go in with a touch of this kind of muted plum shade. Kind of use this to just softly blend out that darker shade and then wipe off that brush again. And I'll go in with just a touch of this taupe shade here. So it creates a really soft shadow under there, nothing harsh. All right, so now we're gonna clean up under the lashes. I'll leave this part in. I've had the question about how to do this properly. I use some almond oil that I've just transferred into this fancy little bottle on a Q-tip. And my favorite brand is the Now Solutions. And so all I do is just take this Q-tip under 
that area. And then I use the Q-tip. You wanna make sure your Q-tip's not too saturated when you go out here. You can just gradually bring it up. And I just create the angle kind of going up to where the tail of my brow will be when I fill it in. So you can choose the angle, but you definitely wanna go up just to give yourself just that little lift in the outer corner. For concealer, I am going to use two shades of the new Natasha Denona High Claim Concealer. I've been testing this out, but spoiler alert, I am actually really loving this. So I'm gonna start off first with the color corrector. This is C3. I just feel like, especially because I've got a lot of fam camera filming to do today. I almost said famera, <laughs> filming camera, I don't know. So I'm just gonna use this uh, on my darkest spot. So I just feel like I like to have a little extra color correction when I'm going to be having photos taken. See what a nice job just the corrector does? It's amazing and I do truly feel like the formulation of this, the texture is so different than anything else I have in my drawer. And I have a drawer full of concealers and correctors. So I'll keep you posted, but so far loving it. And I've been trying a couple of different shades. I'm not quite sure I've landed on my perfect shade for concealing, but I'm gonna use the P4 shade today, which is peach four. So it has kind of more neutral tones. Um, I'm just gonna use this in a couple of areas where I did not put that corrector, just kind of help the whole area blend together. The color corrector, oddly enough, I, and it's partly because I didn't choose a super deep shade, but it's not so orange that it's real apparent in person. So it just does enough correcting that it cancels out all that darkness, but I really feel like it blends seamlessly with just a little bit of the concealer over the top of it. Isn't that nice? And the other thing is this is supposed to help over time reduce your darkness because it has some great ingredients in it. So another great bonus, right? I mean, look at that. I'm blown away. Okay, now something I've been doing recently and you definitely have to have the right product and the right brush to do this, but I've been enjoying kind of doing some of my powder products before I powder my face. And I know that sounds a little scary, but because I'm using more of a matte finish or a natural matte finish foundation, it has worked well. So I'm gonna use the Ruffer 05 brush. This is one of the keys. I'm using my new shade of Gucci bronzer number two. And I just think this creates a really soft, more natural looking contour when I wanna use a powder. And this formula just blends like butter. Don't have to work hard. The Physician's Formula Butter Bronzers are also really nice too. Those have a little glow though, so I do really prefer those more for just bronzing. But today I'm, you know, I'm pulling out some of the good stuff because I have important things. So yes, I'll just tell you briefly, I'll be sharing more probably on social media as the months go by, but I'm going to be doing a piano concert with four other pianists and um, we're just putting together some promotional stuff and one of those requirements is we need a picture. So <laughs> I'll be sharing some of that. It's a concert in the fall, so I have some time to prepare, but thankfully since we're sharing the load, <laughs> none of us have to prepare too many songs. So that's a good thing. And now, of course, I got to go in with shade number three, and I'm going to use the BK Beauty 103 brush. I just love this bronzer. So this is more warm toned for sure. The deep bronze from Physicians Formula, that is a similar color, I feel like, to this, and a really nice formula. Oh, I forgot to contour my nose. Let's go back. I'm going to use the Lorac contour brush. I'm going to go back to that shade number two and just lightly 
on toward the nose. All right, let's just go for it. Let's go for the gusto today. I'm gonna to use this House Labs. This is Dragon Fruit Days in the Color Fuse Blush. I'm using the Morphe E4 brush. And I really love this blush. I think if applied correctly, I mean, just, you know, dab in your brush on. Even, I haven't even powdered. And I feel like this provides really Good, nice, beautiful color, and just a hint of a glow. No shimmer, but really pretty. This is the Natasha Denona Pastel Plexa Glow Highlighter. I thought this was gonna be like green and look really odd on my skin, but it's actually beautiful. Do you see, it does have some, just a little bit of kind of a color shift but it's so pretty. All right, let's get my brush. I'm gonna use the MAC 140 Fan Brush. And let me just show you. It's like, as the light hits, it does change color, but it's not unnatural. I thought it was gonna look green or something weird, <laughs> but it doesn't, it's so pretty. And I mean, do you see it? And there's no chunky glitter particles. I don't know. I've really enjoyed this. Okay. Now under the eyes, I'm going to just take, I have a damp beauty sponge and I'm just going to tap out any little bit of creasing, which I don't have much. And then under the eyes, I am using the Makeup Forever HD Ultra, what is it? Ultra HD Micro Finishing Loose Powder. This is one of my favorites. It is a finishing powder, which I have a video coming up. It's going to talk all about that, but it's going to also kind of tell you why I love to use this under my eyes. Okay, so I'm just going to really lightly dab some of that under the eyes, set that concealer. And then to actually set my foundation, I'm going to use the NYX Mineral Matte Finishing Powder on a powder puff here. All right, and then I'm gonna go back with my bronzer brush because that powder has a little hint of color. Uh, it can kind of mute your bronzer or your blush or whatever. So I always like to just go back with kind of my bronzer brush and my blush brush, just touch that up. All right, for brows, since I got this new blonde hair color, the perfect color right now for me is the Milani Precision Brow Pencil in the shade 120 Caramel. This has a hint more warmth, but it's not too warm. And I do like just overall the formula of this pencil. It's pretty easy to apply. So I'm just going to do that. And I'm just going to add a little bit of Anastasia Beverly Hills Clear Brow Gel. For lashes, because I think I want more of a fluffier look, I'm gonna use the Maybelline The Falsies Surreal Mascara along with the Voluminous Primer from L'Oreal. And then on the lower lashes, I'll use my Cali Ray Mascara. Now, I am absolutely loving this mascara. Paired with that primer, I just feel like it gives the lashes a really beautiful, fluffy look. But because today is one of those extra kind of days, I am going to apply the Risa Does Makeup Martini Half Lash. I just love these. I love how they look on camera, on film. So for those extra special days like today, I like to use them. This is the Lash Couture strip lash adhesive. I just think this is really easy to use. So I'm going to apply a little bit of this. And by the way, these are still my original pair of these lashes. So I've used them a number of times. I did have to peel off little clumps of glue today. But I'm going to use the velour lash tool to apply these. This made it so much easier to apply the lashes the last time. So I'm going to let that glue dry and then we'll set the lashes on. Okay, lashes are on. 
Today's was not as easy as the first time I used this tool, but you know, some days are like that. So I'm gonna wipe off my gloss on my lips and go around the edge with my MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot. Okay, I've been debating about lip combination. We're gonna give this one a try and then I'll put on my top and if I don't like it, I'll adjust it with some gloss. So starting off, I'm gonna use one of the Smashbox Be Legendary Line and Prime Lip Pencils in the shade Medium Neutral Rose. If you saw my battle of the lip liners, you will know this brand. It's one of the top two. And I have almost all of the shades in this lip liner. For lipstick, over the weekend, my husband and I went to the outlet stores and I had to go in the cosmetic outlet, right? I just had to. And I picked up one of the Bobbi Brown. This is the crushed lip color and it's in the shade blush. Look at this shade. It's just so pretty. Oh my goodness. This is the first time I think I've tried this formula. All right, so I fixed my hair, filmed my hair tutorial, and now here is our finished makeup look. And I love it. I love how all these colors came together. We have some pink, purple tones on the eyes, but it's all matte, which is pretty unusual for me, but it's actually a look I have done several times over the last couple of weeks and really been enjoying it. So check the description box below for links and a list of everything I used today, as well as the link to the hair tutorial. So you can get a 360 of my new color, my new cut, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.